It's Morphin' Time! The class is TMNT 101. Your instructor, Sound Out 12. Welcome to Everyone's Making Turtles, a breakdown of all the current Ninja Turtle toy lines that are running around out in the world of toy collecting. And I do mean collecting because a lot of these are collector lines. This is kind of a wild thing happening right now. Ninja Turtles essentially does not have any major media focus beyond the wonderful ongoing comic book, and yet there is a bunch of companies making stuff. Particularly, we're going to be looking at the last few years, from like eh, 2019 to 2020 to now, because there's been a lot of stuff happening in the Ninja Turtles space from different companies for different reasons. So we're going to break this down. I got this grouped into four different chapters, so that way we can kind of look at each company and sort of see what they do. But yeah, let's go through all the craziness of all the Ninja Turtles toys that are out and have been out in the last couple years. So chapter one of this video is the novelty. These are essentially items that aren't dedicated toy lines per se. This is stuff that is sort of one-off, things you'd pick up in a store that says, oh hey, that's 10 bucks and it's a Ninja Turtles thing. So let's start breaking these down. So first up we have Mattel. Now Mattel of course makes things like Hot Wheels, but they also recently had this wonderful line of Mega Blocks, known as Mega Constructs, for the Ninja Turtles, and they did some really cool stuff. There was a really neat set of Toys R Us exclusive Mirage Comics based Ninja Turtle sets, and I love those deeply. They are some of the best looking Mirage stuff I think we've ever gotten. They also made a lot of stuff based on the classic 80s cartoon, including this massive Technodrome playset, which opens up to a full playset inside. I absolutely love this line, but sadly it seems to have died off as soon as Toys R Us did, which is kind of a shame because for a while that was the only way to get classic 80s Ninja Turtles. Luckily there's more options now, but for the most part Mattel pretty much just makes Hot Wheels stuff at this point, and hey, that contributes something because Hot Wheels collectors are definitely a part of the toy market that no one really talks about enough. So next up we have Funko, who probably are the kings of novelty things at this point. There's a lot of Funko product out there, specifically Funko Pops are a big deal, but they've done a lot of other stuff too. I'm not going to get into it all because there's quite a bit. Uh, I own one Funko Pop for Ninja Turtles and it's Casey Jones. I wonder why. But anyways, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, hey, Funko Pops are cool. And if you're into that collection, they're great. Uh, admittedly, I own a lot of Funko Pops, just not a lot of Ninja Turtles ones, because I mostly collect like the DC ones, and Disney World ones, and Disneyland ones, and Disney Parks ones. Anyways, the point is, I have my types of things I get in Pop, but Ninja Turtles isn't usually one of them, outside of the aforementioned Casey Jones. Next up, we have the world's tiniest TMNT, I think. These are incredibly small, miniature TMNT figures which I don't know exactly why this company does this, but they do. It's neat. It's fun. They do it for multiple different toy lines, but um, it's kind of an oddity. Like, if you want really, really small Ninja Turtles figures, here you go. They are a neat novelty, though, uh, that I can say. It's just kind of strange in a lot of ways. Now we're talking? Yeah! Not to be outdone, Jada Toys, the maker of die-cast figures and incredibly good universal monster figures, there's really no in-between there. They also put out like a turtle van that's sort of a Volkswagen bus, and then some other little uh, die-cast things here and there, but they're playing in the field, it's just not maybe as extensive as some others. Chapter 2, The Oddities. These are companies that just randomly put out stuff and then just never looked back. But also one that still keeps going. It's kind of strange, but let me explain where I'm coming from. Is a party First up, Bandai's SH Figure Arts line, otherwise known as the house that Kamen Rider built, also put out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures. They're based on the 1987 series, and they actually look pretty animation accurate, all things considered. The sculpts are broken up by a lot of joint usage and a lot of other things that come with the nature of figure arts because they are really, really articulated figures. But hey, they look good overall. The only unfortunate part is that they only made the four turtles and nothing else. Uh, there was a Shredder prototype, I believe, and hopefully I can find a picture for still online. 
But that was it. They never actually released Shredder, and they never actually continued the line forward. I don't know if they lost license or if the initial Turtles didn't sell well enough. But yeah, that was it for Bandai's figure arts line. Four Turtles, and they were out. The wise guy is Another company that barely made anything was Mondo. Mondo is typically a record company that started to get into the world of 1-6 scale figures. Their current Master of the Universe line is fantastic. But they did dabble in Ninja Turtles a couple years back specifically doing the four turtles based on the Mirage comics. And honestly, looking at these, aside from the fact they're not a scale I collect, they're probably the best looking Mirage turtles we've ever gotten because they're not based on the issue one art so much as the later issues of the Mirage comic when Eastman and Laird had developed their style more and got a more unique look to each turtle. And they also came with colored bandana head options if you wanted that as opposed to the all red. So honestly, Mondo did a pretty great job with these and I wish they would have continued because this could have been a really cool line of one six scale turtles. But again, I don't know how licensing works or if they just didn't sell well enough. But honestly, they are some of the coolest looking turtles figures ever made. Lastly of the oddities, we have the Loyal Subjects. Now they had done a series of action vinyls, which were small articulated chibi style action figures that were blind box for Ninja Turtles. But that evolved recently, I think last year, into the BST line, which are five inch scale figures that incorporate all kinds of different franchises within them. It's a very weird mix. But specifically talking about the Ninja Turtles, they didn't just stop at the four turtles. They done Bebop and Rocksteady. There's a Casey Jones that I have on pre-order. And there's a lot of kind of cool stuff in that realm that definitely adds to, you know, a display of specifically 5-inch stuff. So they're a little bigger than the old Playmates things. They're smaller than the NECA stuff. So if you're looking for specifically 5-inch, I guess Loyal Subjects is there to hook you up. Personally speaking, outside of aforementioned Casey Jones, I'm not planning to pick up any of these. So it's just one of those things. But when it comes down to it, it's not a bad line in theory, and they are based on the 80s animated series, so there is some advantage there. They're also much cheaper than NECA's offerings for the animated stuff, so that is another factor to consider as well. So now we've come to Chapter 3, the crossovers. Because Ninja Turtles crossing over with things is a very recent occurrence in a multitude of ways, and there's actually some toy support for this, which is pretty cool. Now, some of these will make sense, and some of these won't, and we're going to go through them. But we're going to start with one that sort of happened and left because, well, the company died. And that's DC Direct. So with DC Direct's Ninja Turtles offerings, it was a course to tie into the Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated movie. Which, if you've never seen, is actually quite fantastic. Um, it's really well done as both a Ninja Turtles movie and a Batman movie. I really enjoy it. It's got a lot of great stuff to it. But that was based off of a comic lineup that DC and IDW did, which was Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There was three main miniseries and then a spinoff that was crossing over the 2012 Turtles with Batman the Animated Series, and that was also pretty cool. But specifically talking about the toys, there was some special releases done by DC Direct. Now this is, of course, before DC Direct went under because of AT&T, WB merger, and then cutting jobs, and then suddenly DC Direct was gone. But now it's revived because McFarlane Toys picked up the rights to it or something. Point is, these figures came out, but they're not really available anymore, but I didn't want to highlight them. They had, uh, to start off, they had a Michelangelo dressed as Batman, which was a scene from the movie. And then they had a series of two packs that were exclusive to GameStop, including, you know, a Batman character and a Turtle character. And so there was five of these in total, and honestly, it's pretty cool. Especially for the fact they included, like, Alfred and Ra's al Ghul, because those are characters that usually don't get action figures. So in addition to being, you know, hey, here's the Turtles and the Batman characters based on this movie, here's a couple Batman characters you wouldn't normally see. So pretty awesome overall. I didn't end up picking these up because I think the price at the time was a little high. It was GameStop. They were hard to find. I ended up not going for it. But honestly, they did make a nice line of figures. It's kind of a shame that they're not around anymore to kind of continue doing this. I would love to have seen some Batman Ninja Turtles comic-based ones because I love the way they look in those comics. But alas, this is what we have. Don't tell her he's the prince of the bar. Next up, we have Playmates, because even though we'll talk about Playmates on their own later, Playmates has recently done a crossover series between Ninja Turtles and Cobra Kai. 
which is a weird combo because as far as I know, there's no fiction of the Ninja Turtles crossing over with Cobra Kai. It just seemed like Playmates wanted to make Cobra Kai but could only get the license if it was a crossover with Ninja Turtles. It's very strange, but once again, a series of two packs, I'm going to be saying that a lot, that combine a Turtles character with a Cobra Kai character. And I don't know anything about the Cobra Kai side of this, but it might be exciting for those looking for it. Uh, but anyways, it's kind of strange, but honestly, there's worse things out there. It's just kind of interesting that they just suddenly appear and they're like, hey, here you go. And everyone's like, no one asked for this, but we'll take it if we're Cobra Kai fans. I, I don't know. I don't follow the show. I don't follow the fandom, but I'd be curious if you pick these up simply for the Cobra Kai figures. Let me know in the comments. And our last crossover was when Hasbro got to dip their toe into the Ninja Turtles realm with the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2-Packs. Yet again, 2-Packs. Now, what's interesting here is that this is sort of different than the previous crossovers, where that is Turtle character plus other crossover character. This is not like the Red Ranger with Raphael. This is Raphael as the Red Ranger, and so on and so forth. Because in the comic... Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they actually got to use the Ranger powers, with the four turtles becoming four of the Rangers, and then April becoming the Pink Ranger. So Hasbro took that chance to make these figures in the Power Rangers Lightning Collection. And minor spoilers, these might be some of the best Ranger figures in the entire Lightning Collection, which is kind of wild to me. Rounding out the assortment, though, they added in Tommy disguised as a foot soldier and a single-packed morphed Shredder, which I don't have for this video. I, my pre-order hadn't fulfilled yet. I don't technically need it, need it till the rundown for 2022 for Power Rangers. So I hadn't rushed ship it, but there is a shredder as well. But we're going to be looking at the three two packs because I have them here. And let's take a deep dive into the ups and downs and the good things and maybe not good things about these two packs. So the two packs are broken down with Donatello and Leonardo, Michelangelo and April O'Neil and then a Foot Soldier Tommy with Raphael. Seeing the whole Ranger team together is actually really cool. They actually are probably the fastest team completed in the Lightning Collection so far, which is somewhat horrifying. So if you're wondering what the scale is on these figures, let's compare them to some other Ninja Turtles. So first of all, from left to right, we have the NECA Toon Raphael, the Super 7 Ultimates Raphael, the Power Rangers Raphael, and then the NECA Movie Raphael. So you can kind of see it, he's kind of in between the Super 7 and NECA Movie. What's really cool is they kept up the tradition of the unmasked heads the Lightning Collection carries forward, which is honestly kind of surprising in a lot of ways, but really appreciated. And I found these heads easier to swap with the new double ball jointed necks on these as opposed to the hinge and socket size of the normal figures. When we get to April O'Neil, You'll notice that she has no skirt where the normal Wild Orphan Pink has a skirt, but the thing that makes her more unique is the unmasked head, which has kind of a more realistic tone than the Turtles does, which is a little strange. But she does come with a camera and a microphone, so it gives her that reporter angle. When it comes to Tommy, he comes with three different head options. The first being a fully masked foot head, then a head with a half mask, which the half mask is a separate piece, and then you get a pulled down mask plus the unmasked head as is, and you can have a look there. But I will say that the Tommy head looks weird compared to the turtle heads because the Tommy is very much like the Jason David Frank face that they've already sculpted, and the turtles are just straight up comic book. But taking a look at the rangers next to their respective turtles, it's really cool how a lot of the design elements carried forward. This was something from the comic design, and the Hasbro team did a really good job of translating it to the Lightning Collection so that these look like they're from the same universe. And I especially love how the weapons are a mixture of the turtle weapons with the Power Ranger weapons. What's also nice is you have Leo's weapons connecting together despite being two separate things, just like the Power Lances with the Blue Ranger. So it's got that very similar vibe going on. Not to mention, the turtles are fully pinless jointed and have extra range of movement that the normal rangers don't have, but are getting in later Lightning Collection assortments. So the turtles are kind of introducing some new elements here, in addition to being a fun crossover. What's really interesting too is I find that the April O'Neil Pink Ranger, seen on the right without the skirt, actually has overall better color matching than the Mighty Morphin Pink Ranger to the left, with the one with the skirt. And that's just kind of funny to me because that's something I've been asking for since the line started. But hey, at least one of the Pink Rangers has consistent colors. Also, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but the foot soldier design from this comic that Tommy is wearing 
has a similar kind of cross purple guard thing that looks similar to the dragon shield from the Green Ranger. So kind of a neat detail. What's also a neat detail, and one I don't see people talk about a lot online, they actually include the power axe from the Black Ranger with Donatello, which means you can combine all the weapons into a new form of the power blaster. This one does look a little weird because of the nature of the power daggers being nunchucks and the chain is there, but the fact this can happen is pretty cool. Of course, every figure comes with effect parts. Tommy comes with two, even. In fact, Tommy's and April's are actually reuses from pre-existing ones, but all four of the turtles have unique effect accessories. It's also kind of interesting because Donatello's comes with a power blast because I believe there was a point in the comic where he used his bow staff like a cannon because of the cannon mode of the power axe. But overall, really great figures that take two of my favorite things and merge them together into a really awesome package. I look forward to getting that shredder. So we come to chapter four, the big players. Those who are going out and making as much Ninja Turtles as possible. And we're gonna go from lightest output to largest output, beginning with Raphael is cool, but Playmates Toys. So Playmates Toys, the originator of the Ninja Turtles toy line, still is doing stuff. Uh, their license, is still the master toy license, and as far as I know, every other company that wants to make Turtles toys has to talk to Playmates, which gives them a little power, which is kind of nice. It's also why most of NECA stuff is exclusive to Walmart or Target, but more on that in a minute. Playmates has an interesting strategy here because they're letting other people play around in the Turtle space, and they're essentially just re-releasing stuff they've already made. There's uh, a multitude of reissues happening, but specifically I want to talk about kind of something interesting, which is the six-figure box sets. These are reissues of six figures, whether they be from the Vintage line or the 2012 line, villains, movie stuff, whatever it is, it's six figures packed together in a box, and it's actually kind of neat. I have the Movie Star set based on Secret of the Ooze, so let's take a look at it. So the Movie Star box set actually comes in this really cool box with artwork all the way around that is the subway car the Turtles discover as their new home in the film. It also has a nifty carry handle on the top. You can open up the side of it and see that the figures are neatly packed inside. Four of them, of course, are the Turtles, and they are on vintage-styled cards, just like they are vintage-styled figures. And why do I say styled and not replica? Well, looking at Michelangelo here compared to a picture of the original, there's some differences. Namely, the accessories are different and the way the bubbles are on there. So there's definitely no way to mix up the vintage versus the new. Also an interesting twist of fate, the Splinter is not the flocked movie Splinter figure, but is actually the original Wave 1 Splinter painted like the movie 1. And then Super Strever, I believe, was not on the movie Star card back in the old days, but he is here, so that's kind of neat overall. It's an interesting set of figures. In the other realm of Playmates, they did start kind of putting their classic turtles back out, which were done during the 2012 show. They were 7 inches, they are really big, but really articulated, and most people have forgotten about them now that NECA has been doing their thing. But actually, they're still kind of neat figures. They just haven't aged the best. But they've been re-released recently with a Shredder prototype that was probably pulled from the drags of hell and a Triceraton that was probably pulled from the depths of an unused concept. So if you want the Playmates-style classic turtles in two packs that are probably about the same price as NECA ones, e they are out there. I think they're exclusive to Walmart, so that's another hiccup. The other thing with some of the other reissues, they've been reissuing vehicles such as the Turtle Van or the Turtle Blimp, again, exclusive to Walmart. So there's stuff out there. One thing that is brand new, though, is their last Ronin figure. This is based upon the comic TMNT The Last Ronin, which is uh, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird's return to Ninja Turtles comics, and it's actually kind of neat. I, a lot of people were like, oh, that's, that's cool. I might get that, and then NECA announced theirs like 30 minutes later, which was a little mean, NECA. A little mean. But there is still reason for this one to exist, as it's scaled, uh, according to the listing, it's scaled at 4.5 inches tall, not 6 inch or 7 inch, which means it would fit with your older sized figures, even if it is, like, more articulated. It's actually quite impressively articulated when you look close up at the details. So honestly, Playmates, you're doing something cool there, and I would like to see more of that. Maybe some newer modern characters, maybe ones from the IDW comics that haven't been tapped yet, like Jenica or, you know, anybody really, like 
old hob, but put them in that older sort of scale so that, you know, none of the other companies are really going to get to that or do something like that because Playmates is pretty much the ones working in their old four and a half inch scale. So Playmates is doing stuff. It's not anything new and exciting. And for most collectors, they're going to pretty much just ignore anything they're putting out. But there is stuff coming out. It's just 90% the stuff that's already been out, which is part of the problem. Next up, we have the indie company that could, Super 7. This is a San Francisco-based company who is a very small company. They don't have too many employees, and they're not a massive manufacturing company. They are small-scale, independent company. And they make some of the coolest stuff around. Now, when we're specifically talking about Ninja Turtles, there's two lines that people will point to. The first one is Reaction. Reaction is for a very specific type of collector. Ones that miss the four or five points of articulation, basic Kenner style from back in the 80s, but applied to different things that aren't Star Wars. And if that's your thing, it's totally your thing. For me, I just have Casey Jones. I wonder why. But, you know, it's kind of neat to see something like this where it's a throwback line that's not just let's recreate Playmates' vintage toys, but let's just put these into a similar style as some other figures. And Reaction has a wide range of characters, so there is a positive there. But for me, I just got Casey Jones. But I don't really know why. It's not like it's my favorite Ninja Turtles character or anything. I don't know. But the thing we'll focus on today is the Super 7 Ultimates line, because these are their made-to-order, 7-inch scale, fully articulated, fully detailed, fully painted action figures, and they're kind of amazing. But they are a very specific style, so let's get into it. I have quite a few, and we're going to be kind of doing broad strokes, because I honestly could review all of these in depth at a different time. But let's look at the Ultimates line as a whole, and see where it's currently going, and what makes this line so unique? So Super 7's Ninja Turtles Ultimates line actually goes for a different aesthetic than just, hey, it's based off of a show. It's in fact based off of Playmates' original toy line. The figures themselves are said to be a 7-inch scale, which means the turtles are shorter than 7 inches. They come in at about Marvel Legends height, which means properly scaled next to other Super 7 Ultimates, such as Lion-O from Thundercats. And as you can see, putting them next to each other, the Super 7 Turtles are definitely inspired by the Playmates Turtles, which gives them a really great nostalgic feel. Adding to that, while I have the alternate heads on the Turtles, which are new designs, the primary heads they come with are just straight up the vintage toy heads. And as you can see with Michelangelo here, you just have so many details carried forward from the colors to the overall kind of sculpting, that extra added detail, which is really cool. And, you know, they're not one-to-one -one just blown up Playmates figures, but instead taking that design aesthetic and expanding it to a larger format. And I really, really dig it. Especially nice to see just the different colors on the turtles, which makes them more distinctive than all being a shade of green. And this homage even gets down to the accessories because they come with the unpainted weapons on the weapon sprues. But they also come with painted versions of all the weapons too, which is what I prefer. And you can even have options for Michelangelo's nunchucks, whether you want the real chains or the plastic ones, it's up to you. They even went to add the details such as the extra weapon holder on the back of Raphael, which was on the vintage toy. But they added some animation-specific accessories like Michelangelo's grappling hook from the later seasons when Europe complained about the nunchuck usage. And a pizza box for good measure. Also, the turtle com is included with several of the turtles, and that's honestly a great accessory because it is iconic to the cartoon. Overall, I just love the way these look together, but the turtles are not all that's here. Looking at some of the other characters, Casey, April, and Splinter are great additions. I love that April has the handgun she had on the vintage toy, and Casey has hockey pucks. Adding to that, the very large and very impressively detailed Muck Man with Joe Eyeball, Mondo Gecko, and Mutagen Man are just three fantastic looking figures. In particular, I want to shout out to Mondo Gecko. He's my second favorite Ninja Turtles character overall, and this is probably my favorite figure of Super 7's line. And then to add to that, great villains. Baxter Stockman as a fly, also Bebop and Rocksteady, which were part of the gateway into this line for me. They're just really, really cool looking. Except some of the larger figures have trouble standing. You're probably wondering where Shredder is, but, well... We shredded Shredder! The thing they didn't carry over from Playmates was the sense of scale, where all the figures were kind of the same size, 
you can actually get different scales here, with like Bebop and Rocksteady being much larger, Mondo Gecko being closer to the turtle size, Casey Jones being like normal human size to the turtles, April also being a little shorter, but still taller than the turtles, and Splinter being shorter than the turtles because he is hunched over. So with the sense of scale, the detail, the accessories, outside of, you know, the made-to-order availability, even though there's a lot of restocks online due to the popularity, this line is actually quite great, and it's very, very hard for anything to top this for me because this is hitting the exact sweet spot of aesthetics and details and character selection. But it doesn't work for everybody, and I can acknowledge that. But for me, this is my favorite of the Ninja Turtles toy lines right now. And now we've come to the biggest player in the Turtles game at the moment, NECA. Now, NECA has had sort of a rocky relationship with the toy industry between some weird... PR decisions, you know, public relations, not Power Rangers, and some very, very, very weird quality control. I've had a lot of NECA figures break because they painted the figure after it was assembled, so the joint was painted, and then something just snaps. Frustrating. But they have been doing a lot better in recent times, and I think that's due to the success of their multiple Ninja Turtles lines. I do mean multiple. Now, NECA got their start with Turtles back in the mid-2000s with a line of Mirage comic-based turtle figures, which are very popular still to this day, as they are seen as the best in the 7-inch scale for the Mirage Turtles. And in fact, when it comes down to it, NECA has, you know, sort of expanded from there, not just with the Mirage stuff, but across the Turtle universe. So, going forward, if you want to have a brief timeline, there was the Mirage Turtles, then they did some quarter-scale movie turtles, as well as some Comic-Con box set of video game turtles, and then eventually we got to shrunk down quarter-scale figures into 7-inch scale, and then that was a box set. And then the rights opened up, even though it had to have some asterisks to it, for NECA to release the stuff to general retail and not just conventions. So, Target got cartoon-based turtles, GameStop got movie turtles, and then GameStop only had, like, eight figures, and then it moved to Walmart. So if you're looking for NECA stuff, if you want cartoon stuff, it's at Target. If you want movie stuff, it's at Walmart. If you're looking for video game and comic stuff, check your comic shops and online retailers, which honestly, they're the easiest figures to get out of all of this. And pretty much, if you want quarter-scale figures, look at any place that sells quarter-scale figures. Uh, RIP Toys R Us, you used to carry those as well, and that was amazing. But when it comes down to it, NECA has a wide, wide variety of toys. And in fact, even if, you know, there is some issues with distribution and availability, I don't think anyone can discredit how much they have made. They are going so crazy that it's impossible to track it all. So while availability is probably the biggest issue, because a lot of figures don't get reissued, there's issues finding them at Walmarts or Targets, they have very limited windows on the NECA store, like usually only two weeks, it's kind of amazing how much they've made despite all of that. But we're going to look specifically at the Toon line and the Movie line, because I do have a few figures from both. And I figure, let's do that as kind of a good overview of NECA. I don't really own any of the comic figures or the video game figures, because I don't really want the video games, and the comic ones I want aren't out yet, that sort of thing. So let's take a look and see, because there's a lot to see with NECA, especially in their cartoon line. But we're going to start with the movie first. Okay, so I don't own all four movie turtles, because, uh, again, that availability thing, couldn't get them at GameStop, couldn't get them at Walmart. I did recently order the Secret of the Ooze 4-pack, though, so I should have movie turtles at some point, but for now we just have Raphael because he was in disguise with Casey Jones, and you already know my thing with Casey Jones. Scale-wise, it's hard to like have a good comparison, but they are in the NECA movie scale, so as you can see, Raphael's about the height of Marty McFly, but not quite as tall as Doc Brown, if that makes any sense. And compared to other toy lines, this Raph is going to be about Marvel Legends size, much like how the Super 7 figure was, but he is a little taller than the Super 7 figure. Two of the other characters I have is April and Casey. These are both the ultimate versions, so we have the actor likenesses, which both look great. But the absolute winners for me in the movie lineup has been Toka and Razar from Secret of the Ooze. These are two of the coolest costumes ever put to film, and these are such incredibly detailed action figures of both of them. And I especially like the sense of scale, as they do feel much larger than Raphael, and I really can't wait to get those Secret of the Ooze turtles in, so that way I can have all that scene put together. Also, Toka's spikes are quite spiky. 
Overall, I don't have a lot of the movie figures because of lack of availability, but there is more I do want to get in the future, and I hope that there'll be more available. Being able to order from the NECA store instead of having to track them down at Walmart is definitely a plus, but I hope there is more movie figures in the future in my collection. So there has been a lot of releases of the main four turtles. These are specifically the Wave 2 2-packs, which are based on the key art colors, and they're just the ones that I happen to get. Scale-wise, these figures are a little smaller than the movie figures, and they are smaller than the other turtle figures we've really looked at, and you can see the next two, Marvel Legends Hawkeye or NECA Doc Brown. One of the issues I want to get off at the bat is that there is a ton of paint on these figures to replicate the animate look, and that starts to rub off onto accessories, which is really a bummer. That being said, they actually come with a ton of stuff, things you wouldn't expect, like Michelangelo's comic book. Getting something like a blueprint for Donatello to stare at, it's just really appropriate to the character, and I really appreciate that. I also like, you know, little details like Raphael coming with pizza, and having a pizza that can be stabbed through a side to replicate the opening credits. Plus, you can set a scene with these, a little diorama function, you can have fun with it. Going alongside that, we have some rad regulars with Casey, Splinter, and April. Even though I think that's probably the worst April O'Neil figure I've ever owned because her proportions are just out of whack. She's practically a chibi. What the heck happened there? Also, we have bodacious bad guys. Bebop, Rocksteady, Krang, Shredder, Baxter Stockman, Roadkill Rodneys. It's the classic animated crew. We also have great guest stars like Metalhead, Kerma, Leatherhead, Slash, and of course, my boy, Mondo Gecko. And some terrific Triceratons. So honestly, I love the fact Triceratons are in this. And that's why I have them, because I love the Triceratons. They make me happy. Overall, I think the cartoon line has a lot of great things to it. A lot of great styling. A lot of really, really, really deep character pulls. But there are some limitations. The painted figures lead to some painted joint problems. Rubbing of accessories. And the overall availability is, again, like everything, kind of hard. But I gotta say, this is a fun line, except I kind of felt like I hit my cap. There's only a couple more figures I'd actually get because they're getting really obscure, even for my taste. And the one last thing I'll say about NECA, uh, they also had a series of figures done through Loot Crate, which um, I'm not a big fan of because you have to basically blind buy four figures in advance to guarantee you get one, and all you got to go off is a name. So hopefully that goes away. I know NECA as a company bought Loot Crate, and then they started selling Ninja Turtles figures exclusive to Loot Crate. But as you may know from my Gundam Loot Crate unboxings, I'm not a huge fan of how Loot Crate does stuff a lot of the times. So yeah, that's something I hope goes away because honestly, just selling things in the NECA store first, then putting them to the exclusive retailers that they have to go to to fit the agreement with Playmates is probably the best way. But overall, I can't fault uh, the selection and variety of NECA, even if I have some nitpicks here and there. So there we go. We've gone through pretty much every toy line that's currently doing Ninja Turtles. And that's impressive for a franchise who's pretty much just running with a comic book right now. It's a good comic book, but still, it's kind of amazing. Usually we get this many toys when there's a movie or a TV show currently active. There is turtle stuff in the works, and we still see more in the future. And yeah, there's actually still more companies throwing their hat in the ring. Mezco recently announced that they're doing a 112 Collective box set of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And they look really cool, and I'm not sure if I'm going to get them, but they do have kind of a mix of the 2012 toy designs with a little 2003, a little Mirage. It's a little bit of everything, and I kind of like that sort of styling. But that being said, if there is something from Ninja Turtles that hasn't been made yet, give it time. NECA made the Concert Tour Turtles. So it's just a matter of time before pretty much every corner of the Turtle universe gets hit. And yeah, that means every corner of everyone's wallets will get hit. This is kind of a crazy time for Ninja Turtles. I can't think of another franchise that has this many concurrent toy lines going on. And that includes some of the biggest brands, such as Marvel or DC. They only have like two or three each. Not like, I don't even know how many were here. But the point is, if you love Ninja Turtles, it's a good time. Enjoy it while it lasts. It won't last forever. But let's see how far we can get with some of these lines, because it's pretty impressive. Me personally, I'm going to be focusing mostly on Super 7, but I've started to dip into the movie NECA stuff, and I want the Mirage NECA stuff, because I think those look great, outside of Renat's wrong color. Weird thing there, hopefully that gets sorted out. But anyways, the point is, is that 
There's a lot of Ninja Turtles for everybody, and if you're a fan of all Ninja Turtles, you're pretty much screwed. So enjoy it while we got it, because I know it won't last forever, because turtle saturation absolutely always happens. It happened in the 80s, happened in the 90s, happened in the 2000s, happened in the 2010s, and it'll probably happen in the 2020s. But for now, companies are feeling bold to make pretty much anything, so let's take them up on that offer. But that does it for the video. If you enjoyed this breakdown of the Ninja Turtle toy lines, Hit the like button, hit subscribe and the notification bell. This was my 1000th recorded video. So if you enjoy my videos, go check out more. I got a lot of analytical, a lot of breakdown, a lot of other stuff. Check them out. I got a lot of cool stuff on the channel. Also leave a comment and tell me if you wanna see more Ninja Turtles videos here on the channel. I'm gonna be using view counts, likes, and comments to decide if I wanna continue doing Ninja Turtles stuff because I love it, but do you love me talking about it? is the question I want answered. So let me know. And thank you to everyone that already likes, subscribes, watches every video, comments, and shares links on Twitter. You're amazing, you keep the channel going. Speaking of keeping the channel going, great shout out to my awesome graphic designer on Twitter at darkclaw 643 and the awesome website Hero Club at hero-club.com for turtle news and more. And until next time, this is Sound Out saying, Cowabunga. I don't know if you guys ever realize this, but uh, if you get accurate looking Ninja Turtle masks, they, uh, they weren't built for people with noses. And adjusting them to make it look, you know, like I have eye contact with the camera. Oh, also people with ears, because you see, I'm adjusting it, and then my nose causes it to slip up, and then every time I blink, I feel the mask. It's, uh, it's lovely.